don't know why I've not thought of doing this before, but the grandmother is very similar to the Mini Moog. This has got two oscillators and the modulation oscillator. And obviously the Mini Moog's got oscillator one and two, which can be modulated by oscillator three. If you've seen the Mini Moog versus the Behringer Model D comparison, you'll know how similar they sound. So this also acts as a bit of a grandmother versus the Behringer Model D comparison. And yes, this is three times the price of a Behringer Model D, or just over twice the price if you buy a used grandmother. But it does have a keyboard and it does have all the extra CV inputs. So for a Moog, this is staggeringly good value, isn't it? They've both got the classic 24 dB Moog filter. And this has also got a high pass filter. On the Mini Moog, you've got a triangle, a shark's tooth, a sawtooth, a square, a thin pulse, and a thinner pulse. So you've got more flexibility on the waveforms from the oscillators on the Mini Moog. The modulation oscillator on the grandmother is slightly different in that it's got a sine, it's got a ramp, a sawtooth, so like an inverse sawtooth, and a square. So it's not quite as flexible as oscillator 3, but it does have the sawtooth. And this has got a few tricks up its sleeve. This can do sync, Minimo can't do sync. It can also do PWM, Minimo can't do PWM. And of course it's got a high pass filter. Plus it's got the attenuator, which is really useful for as you're playing around with the different CV inputs and outputs. And the mix is slightly different on the grandmother in that it increases the distortion you get from the oscillators when you turn them up. The mix on the grandmother only has three channels. So you have a choice of either noise, oscillator three, or external input although you can add an external input in the back here. But effectively, they're both three oscillator synths with a modulation section. This is the Mini Moog reissue, so it has a separate LFO. The standard or original Mini Moog didn't have the separate LFO, so this acts a little bit more like, I suppose, the original Mini Moog. So let's jump straight in and listen to the filters. The filters obviously give everything the Moog character, and that's part of the reason or the attraction of these synths. So let's just play them both on a sawtooth and the filter is completely open. Straight away the Mini Moog's brighter, isn't it? This has got a maximum of 20 kilohertz on the grandmother. On the Mini Moog, the manual states it goes to 32 kilohertz, so you'd expect them to sound slightly different. The grandmother's more similar to the Sub-37 in that respect, although it is a bit brighter than the Sub-37. I've got another video showing that if you want to have a look at that. Let's sweep through the frequencies then. Nice, although I do sound like I'm getting some crackle there as it's around the sort of 11 o'clock position. Let's listen to that again. Yeah, definitely a bit of crackle there, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> Never had that on the uh, on the Mini Moog. Let's have a listen to that then. Obviously, beautiful. So let's add a little bit of resonance. Let's knock it up to full then, see how it reacts. Watch your ears, by the way, because this is going to get spiky. Nice and musical, that, I think. And as we see, we're going to just start the resonance from zero. You get the typical Moog drop in volume. Let's try that on the Mini. That's, <laughs> that's slightly painful. And you can see the resonant peak is a lot higher on the Mini Moog. So tune in the cutoff supposed to that G. You can hear there the resonance is a lot lower on the grandmother. I've added filter tracking and I've balanced the cutoff frequencies and the resonance to get a similar sound. You can see it on the frequency analysis, they're really similar.
but the grandmother at this point is on full resonance. They sound really similar there, but let's whack the filter emphasis up on the mini. This just can't go into that territory. So you're getting much more bite and grit out of the Mini Moog at that point, aren't you? Let's just modulate that filter around one kilohertz then. Let's have a listen to sort of the character of it. Let's do the same up here. both got very similar characters but the resonance on the grandmother is sort of similar to the mini moog around eight out of ten and again let's just whack it up on the mini moog so you can hear the difference the grandmother's got a high pass filter the mini moog obviously doesn't but let's just do a little demo with that take the output out of the mixer Put it into the high pass and put the high pass output to the input of the low pass. So they're the sort of tones that the Minimo can't do. You know, you've got a nice band pass, wide band pass, or thin band pass. Okay, let's take a look at the oscillators now. Let's go from a triangle. So these have both got distinct tones, I think. This grandmother's definitely got more of a gritty texture, hasn't it? Smoother on the on the mini. They do sound different, but they are both in tune. Let's just demonstrate that. There's no beating between the two oscillators there, is there? If they're out of tune slightly, you'll get some beating. Let's just demonstrate that with oscillator two being slightly out of tune. So you can hear the beat in there, wow, wow, wow. And if they're both in tune, that disappears. Let's try that. There you go. As I take the mixer past 12 o'clock on the grandmother though, you get a real change in tone from the triangle. And you can really see the top of that flattening off. You don't get the same effect as much on the Mini Moog. You can see the curve change on the Mini, but it's nowhere near as defined as it is on the Grandmother. The Mini's also got a shark's tooth. Maybe just show you that quickly. So like a, a fuzzy triangle almost. Grandmother hasn't got that. So round to the sawtooth. As we saw earlier, the mini's a little bit brighter, but you can see there's a definite difference on the ramp shapes. The grandmother's much straighter. And the mini's curved. And as I turn the grandmother up past 12 o'clock again. The distortion creeps in. Let's try that on the mini. There's a definite change in shape if you look at the top left, but it's nowhere near as defined again. So onwards to the squares. 
It's like a perfect square almost that, isn't it? Lovely. Let's try that on the mini. Not perfect. I like a slanty square, but I'm not sure if your ears can hear that change. Again, it's brighter on the mini. I might just knock that filter down a tad. Even knocking the cutoff frequency down on the mini, it's still got some sort of more of a more of a buzziness, I think. I'm looking at the frequency analysis on that. Yeah, there's loads more of those intermediate harmonics, aren't there? But there's a lovely little bit of movement in both of those. As you listen to the sounds, they're not flat, they're not a perfect pulse. They sound like they're wiggling. And you can see it doing on the frequency analysis, really nice analog synths. So it's a small pulse one on the mini. Small pulse on the grandmother. They both sound different though. One's inverted, but I don't think that makes a difference to the sound. But on the grandmother, you can adjust the pulse of the width and you can get pulse width modulation. Let's just show you that quickly. And let's put it on the large pulse. So you really don't need the third pulse wave, I suppose. And again, let's modulate that using the modulation oscillator, or the LFO, as some people might call it. Such a shame you can't do that on a Mini Moog. There is a cheat you can use to do a PWM style sound on a Mini Moog, and that's using the ramp or the reverse ramp on oscillator three with a small pulse on oscillator one and detuning them slightly. And the detuning of one oscillator to the other sort of creates that PWM effect. <laughs> so if you've got your Behringer Model D and you want PWM, that's the way to do it. Quickly onto noise, white noise on the grandmother. On the mini, you've got white or pink. Pink's a lot darker than white, as you can hear. Sub-37's only got pink, and I much prefer the white, I think. And while we're on the oscillators, grandmother's got oscillator sync, which the mini mode doesn't. Oscillator 2 also has the linear FM in, as well as the pitch in. So standard sort of FM sounds coming from the modulation, LFO. But with the linear FM in, it gives you slightly different tones. So leaving the same settings. Nice little touch. So that brings us into modulation, really. So the standard modulating routine on the grandmother's got pulse width, pitch amount, and cutoff amount. I know I showed pulse width before by going through the PWM in here, but you can also do it just here with the modulation wheel. But of course, you might not want to use the modulation wheel for your PWM. You might be saving your modulation wheel for your cutoff or your pitch amount. So nicely flexible. 
and pitch or cut off And what I'm showing there is that this goes well into audio. I think in the manual says 1.3, but I think I measured that at 1.7. But then you can stick it through attenuator and you get even more. So we're out of my hearing range there. If we take that out. So again, lots of flexibility in the grandmother. With the mini mode, you have to tell it that's what you're going to do with the modulation wheel. So first thing we'll do is take keyboard control off. So, so now it's acting like more like an LFO. Turn it down to low mode. You can hear those clicks. That's the LFO. And we modulate the oscillator and the filter using these switches. So I'm going to turn the modulation mix to oscillator 3. So that's just modulating the pitch. Let's modulate the cutoff frequency only. On the grandmother you can modulate the pitch amount and the cutoff amount separately using the different these knobs here but on the mini mode it's either on or it's off and it's modulated via the mod wheel so again the grandmother's got a bit more flexibility there of course this mini mode and the behringer model d have got the additional lfo but we're not a million miles away, are we? Considering the Mini Moog is around £3,000, £3,000, something like that. I think they've stopped selling them now. But a second-hand one's going to be well over £3,000. A second-hand grandmother's going to cost you about £650. Maybe that's similar in dollars. About £800, $800 brand new. So it's a, it's a pretty good way of getting yourself a cheap, a cheap Mini Moog. And just another note on the modulation. It's bipolar on the grandmother, so... Modulating the pitch amount of oscillator one drops the initial pitch, so you've got a lower pitch and a higher pitch. So it never goes lower than this. So you get different effects with them, I'm never going to match it up. Interestingly though, the pitch amount on this is only set to about a quarter of the way around or a third of the way around. It can go all the way through to... So that's a lot more flexible than the Mini Moog. Dialing the specific tone on the grandmother is a bit more difficult because it's got such huge range and you've just got the small rate knob. Whereas on the Mini Moog, you've got, you've got different settings for oscillator three. So you've got a big knob that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different calibrations, I suppose. So really easy to dial that into a specific tempo, a bit more difficult on this. And then once you get into the higher frequencies, all nice and sort of subtle and sort of rich sounding on that, aren't they? Whereas this can take it into much more extreme territory because this pitch amount just goes so high. 
maximum on the mini moog makes the mini sound really gentle and nice doesn't it Another thing that my grandmother has that the Minimoog doesn't have is the sample and hold circuit. Which has its uses, obviously. So looking at the envelopes, the grandmother's got a single ADSR. The Moog's got two ADSs where the D, the decay, acts as a release as well, using this switch here. But on the grandmother, you can either follow the envelope with the VCA, or you can have just keyboard on and release. So it's a bit like a gate with release. So the sustain doesn't do anything, or you've got drone. Drone's really useful, wish the Minimo had that. So this isn't quite as inflexible as it looks at first, because the gate with release is really useful actually. So to get that classic feedback circuit that you get on the Minimo, And for the grandmother, we take the output from the filter and stick it in through the, well, through the noise in we're doing in this case. Okay, so let's try and make some sort of classic mini Moog sound, shall we? I suppose the big one is like a three oscillator sawtooth. That's just three sawtooth, one at 32, one at 16, and one at eight. Let's try and do that on the grandmother. So we need to adjust the modulation with the keyboard. So keyboard out to rate in, and we need the wave to come into the mixer. Let's add all the oscillators then. Mini Moog's got a bit more bite because the cutoff frequency goes higher, so let's just knock it down a tad. Lovely little mini mo going on down here with the grandmother, don't we? Let's just try a fourth. So I'll put the top two oscillators, four semitones above octave one. So trying a minor chord, all sawtooths tuned to a C, an E flat, and a G. I'd knock the cut off down a little bit on the mini Moog there, just because it is a bit brighter, but let's show you it with it open. So we're in the same ballpark again. Just changing that to a triangle, a square and a ramp. I don't know, let's knock up. Definitely the same character. So in conclusion, I think this just shows how well designed the grandmother is. To get all that Moog circuitry with a keyboard, I know it'd be nicer if it was longer. You know, it hasn't got the nice wooden edge panels, it's got these plasticky ones. But fantastic value for money if you look at it from that perspective. And great value for money from any perspective, I suppose. So hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. See you next time.